Hello everyone. Uh, now that we know a bit about sound waves, we're going to talk a bit more about what different sound waves sound like, right? So we're going to be talking mostly about the frequency of different sounds and how that affects what we hear. Now, as we know, sound waves are longitudinal waves. The particles that they contain move back and forth in the same direction that the wave is propagating in. So as a result, they're made up of compressions, where the particles are close together, and rarefactions, where the particles are far apart. And we can see that in this diagram over here. So if we were to graph the pressure of the sound wave, then the bits where the particles are close together would be areas of high pressure, and the bits where they're far apart would be low pressure. Now can you remember what these two are called? That's right, compressions, when they're close together, and rarefactions when they're far apart. So if we were to graph it, it might look something like this. And so in this case, a crest at the top will relate to a compression, and a trough at the bottom will relate to a rarefaction. So here, the particles are very far apart, and up here, the particles are very close together. So the wavelength, the period, the frequency, anything that depends on time, won't change when you graph it. So that means that the distance between two troughs or two crests will be the same on this graph as the distance in real life between two compressions or two rarefactions. Similarly, the frequency won't change. The frequency of this transverse graph that we've drawn will be the same as the frequency of the sound wave. Now it turns out that the frequency of the sound wave depends only on the source that creates it. If, for example, a violin creates sound waves at a particular frequency, those sound waves will stay that frequency until they run out of energy or get absorbed by something. So if the source vibrates back and forth for, as an example, 200 times a second, then that means that the wave will have 200 complete waveforms or 200 complete wavelengths every second. And of course, when we're talking about sound, or, or any wave, that means that it travels at 200 hertz. Remember, one hertz is one whole wavelength per second, right? So sound waves tend to have frequencies in the neighborhood of a few hundred hertz. So the frequency of the sound wave does not change. It doesn't matter whether you take the sound and you put it from air into water, or from water back into air, or if you bounce it off a wall, it'll always have the same frequency. A certain violin string vibrates back and forth at 640 times a second. What is the frequency of the sound that it produces? Now remember, the frequency of a sound wave is determined by its source. In this case, that source is a vibrating violin string. If the violin string vibrates at 640 hertz, that is 640 times per second, then the sound wave it produces will be 640 hertz. So even before we go that far, we can see right away that it's not going to be either of the bottom two. Because those aren't measurements of frequencies, they're measurements of periods. Because they're given in milliseconds. So our only correct answer has to be something in hertz. And as we saw, if the violin string is vibrating 640 times a second, that is 640 hertz, then it will create a sound wave with 640 hertz as its frequency.